it's EK from EK Gorman Designs, and I am sneaking in today with some fun Copic coloring using the March Oddball subscription membership digital stamp. The uh, This is a part of the Creepy Cute Chronicles that comes out on Friday nights. The Creepy Cute Chronicles are always free for anybody who has signed up to receive them. However, for either a one-time month fee or a yearly fee, you get exclusive uh, perks such as free digital stamps. This is the digital image from March 2019 and in fact it's multiple images within the March package. I have taken I think four different images from the March um, digital stamps and spliced them together into one big six by six picture and it's a really fun St. Patrick's Day with a twist theme. Um, there is a s digital image in there that says good luck, so it's got that whole if you want something really genuinely St. Patrick's Day, great. There's a nice foamy bug of beer, but they've also taken it the creepy oddball way with the kiss, kiss me I'm creepy, which I think is fantastic. So I spliced these four images together to create the scene that I am currently coloring. And I thought my Copic colors would actually be a really fun way to do this. Traditionally, when you see a St. Patrick's Day themed card, it is bright, it is green, it is vibrant. But being oddball, you can't quite go vibrant. You have to find a twist on it. So that's what I'm trying to do here today. I started off with the mug because I knew it was right there in the front and I knew I wanted it to be bold and bold and brown with nice golden foamy beer flowing from it. So I popped the brown in and then I was like, oh, you know what? I need to get all these skulls in because when you make something light like I've done with all the skulls, you've got to make sure you balance the color so that way you don't wash out the light coloring. If I were to color all the bold and bright colors first, and then at the end, add the pale colors, then I might not get what I'm looking for. By doing the pale colors from the beginning, I knew that I could create the imaging that I wanted. Uh, here's the problem with having a really in-depth scene like this one. Traditionally, I like to use the same colors over and over and over again. So if I'm going to use one yellow, I use it for all the yellows. This scene is so detailed and so many different layers to it. I couldn't just use one yellow. I had to use a variety of yellows. So now I need to put each of the colors in multiple places so they don't seem random. Uh, the last thing you want to do is just keep throwing new and 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 new colors at a project because then it seems chaotic. You need things to be layered in a way that the eye and the brain register how much sense it makes. So I have to be strategically placing different colors in different places so it makes sense. So the color of the beer, the yellow gold, the golden yellow in the beer needed to be in the flowing river plus the dripping eyes plus the stars in the sky. Now with the rainbow, I didn't want to go bright and bold with the rainbow. I didn't want your traditional Roy G. Biv. I needed them to be saturated in a way, and I had to make the choice, do I make them pale or do I make them bold but not bright? And I went with bold but not bright, and that's actually not a rainbow combination I've ever done, is a bold but not bright co rainbow combination. So I was kind of really playing around with the colors to see if I could get a bold but muted, which I know sounds like an oxymoron, but bold and muted can be the same, can happen simultaneously. So I was really playing with my colors and I found that if I took a light color and a bold color and kind of blended them together like I'm doing here, especially with this green, I was getting the effect that I wanted. Now notice all the rainbows have the same shades in them. And there's three different flowing rainbows from this fun skull. But these are the only places that I'm using this combination of color. Now, I knew I wanted the hat for my little St. Patrick's skull head to be green. So I went the opposite of what I did for the rainbow. I use a bold muted for the rainbow, so I went bright and shiny and crisp for the hat. But it needed to be in two places, so not only did I do it in the hat, 
I did it in the four leaf clover. I let them link up together because if I had just done the hat and then colored the four leaf clover a third shade of green, my brain's gonna start getting confused. I hope this is making sense. I'm really trying to explain my thought process here and I f I'm really afraid I'm muddling it up, mainly because I'm rambling. Or maybe I'm not, maybe it's all working out. I hope it is. If you have any questions about what I'm trying to explain, please feel free to throw them down in the comment section and I will type in my responses the best that I can. The blue, this is where I made a mistake. I went too teal. I really wish I'd pulled a bolder blue that was saturated. Um, the teal worked great for exactly what I wanted it to do, but it doesn't have that blue feeling. The other problem is I'm working with a five shade rainbow. I don't have the traditional seven colors, so I had to choose which color to remove. And yellow and one of the purples, one of the purples is always easy to remove. But now what's the other one? And I figured if I used a really good yellow orange, I could get away with it. So I pulled the yellow out, knowing that I had yellow in three places, in the rainbow, in the beer, and the beer river. And then I have a third yellow coming in shortly inside the golden coins. So, I figured if I went with a yellow orange, I could kind of get away with the yellow. And I think the rainbow in the end worked out. It's bold and it's bright, but it's, or I'm sorry, it's not bright. It's bold, it's strong, it definitely takes the focus of this image in the end. However, it's not happy-go-lucky rainbow. And that's the, I guess that's what, at the end of the day, what I was really trying to avoid was a, Hi, everything's joyful and leprechaun swing! <laughs> This one is, in fact, just, hey, we're pouring beer from a rainbow, which would be awesome. If ra at the end of every rainbow was a big old mug of beer, life would be grand. I mean, at the end of every St. Patrick's Day party is a big old mug of beer, so let's, you know. Here are the colors I'm bringing into the gold coins. It's my favorite color combination to make a gold. And because the coins are so little, you don't really see the boldness of the gold. This is the only place I put this blue, but I decided because the cloud was such a large portion of the image itself, the whole focal image, I could get away with this blue being in just one spot. And by putting so much blue in here, I think I get away with not having a stronger blue within the rainbow. I also think adding the blue, a significantly blue cloud, because I originally was going to make the cloud um, gray. I was going to do a gray cloud in my head. But I pulled the blue in and it actually popped the teal rainbow blues, I think, a little bit. It pulled the blue out of the teal. Or I'm crazy and I'm just making this stuff up. Now I'm really trying something different and bold for me. It's not bold in terms of color. I normally would color the ground gray. I, I tend to make a lot of concrete in my work. But I wanted hints of green because this is a St. Patrick's Day themed card. I haven't, by the way, apologized for my head constantly getting in the frame. I'm so sorry. I've got a new rig. I'm trying to figure it out. I, I actually like to lay my head on the desk while I color. And when I'm filming, I can't do that because otherwise you all see my face. And <clears throat> avoid that at all possibilities. So my natural inclination is to get my face as close to the coloring as possible. And I'm just fighting my own instincts. And thus you get my weird head popping into the frame constantly. Anyway, the ground. I wanted green tones within the ground, but it yet to still read as um, St. Patrick's Day and concrete. Sorry, I wanted it to read as concrete despite being St. Patrick's Day. So I used a color combination I've never tried for ground. And I think it worked. I think it reads as... St. Patrick's Day, and it reads as concrete. I didn't want to take the time to color in the background by hand. There's just so much going on. So I actually pulled out my Distress Oxides and let my Distress Oxides color in the corners. Uh, I need to do this more. It's quick, it's simple, it saves ink. Yeah, yeah, it worked. The rainbow needed a bit of sparkle, so I added a bit of sparkle with my sparkle pen because rainbows, no matter what color they are, should have a bit of sparkle. Thanks for peeking in today. I hope you enjoyed my St. Patrick's Day creepy card. Uh, make sure you pop over to Oddball Art and check out information on their monthly subscriptions. Until then, happy crafting!